Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Let's start working towards Dawnstone. We should be able to do it pretty soon here. Um, I think I have everything built to make it. So we already have all the system made to get ember and to um, distribute the ember, but now we need the thing to actually make the metal. So I believe we need a melter. A bunch of kamenite, copper, furnace, iron. Uh, probably gonna want a bin to put under it, I'm assuming. I don't know if it works with the melter, but hopefully it does. Um, a stamp base. And a stamper. Stamp base plus stamper along with the bar stamp. I think we'll be able to make it so I can stamp ingots. I'm not entirely sure how all these work together. Like how to connect them. But it can't be too hard, right? Hmm. I wonder if I can connect the melter directly to the stamper, or am I going to need some sort of, like, a mechanical pump? Because I have an item pump, but obviously if I melt something it's going to be a fluid, and maybe that's what a mechanical pump is for. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. Um, also, I want to mention that I went over to my mop system a couple times, just while I was prepping some stuff, mostly making Kamenite, and it is incredibly productive, that mob system. Man, I got, like, at least 40 bones. I'm already up to 14 ender pearls, and I've only gone over there a couple times. Um, 74 bone meal, and most of it I've already processed. I made tons of kamenite. So yeah, that mob farm is incredibly successful, I love it. Alright, see if we can get this thing to work, and let's see how this has been doing. 48 ember shards, alright. Can you make ember crystals out of ember shards? You can. Okay, so we can complete that quest then. We needed four ember crystals. Eh, I'll do that some other time, actually. I think this thing's out of ember, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's put down the melter, and I guess... I really don't know how this all works together. <laughs> oh, I probably should look up a video for this. But, like, can I put the melter on top of it? And it'll just go into it? I think I need to drop things inside of the melter. So, um... I guess I can just make a little staircase up there. Yeah, that's fine. And I think I need a stamper base. How does that connect, though? Can I rotate it? I feel like this part should probably be aiming towards that. I'm assuming this part kind of like comes out to stamp it. No, 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 no. Give me that back. Christ, that's loud. Hmm. Oh, no, that's backwards. Or is it? I'm pretty sure that's backwards. So we probably do it like that? No, we probably do it like... Get out of here. Probably do it like that. Yeah, that looks right, I guess. I'll put the bar stamp inside? Question mark? What the? That can't be right. I have no idea how this works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how many times I can say that. I don't know how this works, but um, let's just see what happens. So, um, ember emitter, we're going to want another one of those, and also an ember receptor. So we'll have this thing emit here. This thing recept... I don't think the stamper needs a receptor, does it? Maybe it does. Oh, Christ. Get destroyed so fast. Hmm, this side looks different. So... That, that? Let's get some ember in there. There we go. 
Oh, right. We need a lever for this side, too. Oh, well, I don't need any ash right now, so I'll just take this. So that thing should have power. And now I think we just need to melt the right stuff. So what is Dawnstone made out of again? I think it's gold and something else. Mixer. Do I need the mixer? And not the melter? Or I guess I need to probably melt it and then send it the mixer. Uh, but anyway, it looks like it's equal parts copper and gold. What if I just melt those, both of those in it? I'll just melt one thing of gold and one thing of copper. Let's see if I can even do that. Hopefully you can melt ingots and stuff like that and it doesn't have to be in ore form. does not seem to be melting. Okay, uh, let me look this up. Okay, I think I get how this works now. So I am going to need a couple more things. Um, I'm going to need an additional melter. And I am going to need the mixer. And I also made the mechanical pump and the iron pipes, which are used to transport the stuff from the mechanical pump. So it looks like item pipe and item pump are for, well, items, and mechanical pump and iron pipe are for fluids. Um, I actually might need more iron pipe. 16, I used up more of it than I thought. Let's make a couple more iron plates. There, should be plenty. Okay. I don't think the stamper can really go there. The heck was that noise? Sounded like something scurrying. Okay, so... The two melters are for melting the two different things that I need to make Dawnstone. So I'm going to need to melt copper and gold. So they're going to have to melt it separately and send it into the mixer separately. So let's do that. Put that there, put that there. Let's get a couple receptors. Might have to make more receptors. I saw these being put on the bottom. I don't think it matters, but just in case. Let's bind them. Can you set multiple receptors to the same emitter? Probably not. Probably not. Whoa. <laughs> Did not mean to rotate that. Please go back. <laughs> Wrong tool. Alright. That's set up. Oh, I accidentally put away my levers. Eh, I'll get them later. It's fine. So those are both going to get power from these two emitters. That's great. So we are going to have to manually go up here and stick the metals in, but that's fine. And then they're going to melt and we're going to need to pump them out with mechanical pumps. Let's go this way. Mechanical pump into, I, no not item pipe, iron pipe. Actually let's place down the centrifuge mixer. Huh. 
So we're gonna need to pump fluids into that. Um, top or bottom? Just made another batch of emitters and receptors, so we should have plenty of those. And yeah, it looks like the fluids have to go into the bottom of the mixer, and then the output comes out the top. So we want these to go down. Like that, and they're going to need levers too, but again, I forgot to get them. <laughs> and we're gonna pump out the result using a mechanical pump. I wonder if this will connect to the other iron pipes. It will. Oh, you can stop that? Well, you can stop it from one direction, but I can't get it to disappear on the other connection, which is kind of annoying. Well, let's just solve the whole problem and just put it here. I think you gotta go, little tree. I'm sorry. And that is going to pump out into the stamper. And if you put a base beneath the stamper, then it'll automatically collect the ingots that it stamps. Whoops. Come here. So I think that part is the one that goes up, and I guess these are the fluid inputs? They don't really look like fluid inputs, but... Oh well. And then it's got to press against the base? Let's make some stairs. that right? I think it is. Let's see where the bar stamp goes. I don't know if it goes on the bottom or the top. It looks like it goes there. Yeah, okay, so I think it goes there. It looks really silly just floating like that, but uh, I'll change that. Don't worry. So, I think that's pretty much it. Oh. Right, doesn't connect there. It connects there? It doesn't connect there? How do we get it into this thing? Is there a connection on the ball? No. Okay, I'm missing something. Ah, okay, so I need to flip these. This, these it pumps into the stamp base. Right? Yes, okay. That's so strange. Because normally when things take in fluids, or, you know, if they can take in anything, they have a sort of slot, but the stamp base does not have any sort of a slot. Whereas the stamper itself has some sort of a weird slot. Oh, no, give me that back. Oh, it can probably hit either side, huh? Uh... Maybe not. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can we rotate this? There we go. Okay, I think that should do it. I've got the levers with me, finally. So, we're gonna need a lever here. 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 Man, this is a mess. I think that's about it. So let me see if I can fire this thing up. Um, does it have any ember left in it? No. Oh, um. There we go. Oh, I think this one is firing even though it doesn't have a lever because this lever is actually next to it and giving it a redstone signal. 
Okay, well, that works. That looks very odd. Anyway, they are receiving power. So, let's plop in some gold. I just put a lot in there. And if we do this, it shows the tank, and it should start to melt? Oh, that thing stopped already. Oh, um, I'm actually forgetting something. Perceptor... Ember... Emitter, that thing. The centrifuge itself needs power. Huh, I wonder if this can connect to it. Sounded like it worked. Yeah, it's going to it. Okay. And... Yeah, look at that. It's slowly melting it down. 720 millibuckets already. Alright. Throw the copper in. It's going to slowly melt that down. Um, I... Yeah, so I haven't activated it yet. Because it's still in here. But if I flip this, it should... Yep, got pumped out. Excellent. I probably need... Mm, I'm not sure how many millibuckets I need to make one Dawnstone ingot. But let's do that. Let's pump it out. Okay. Should be going out into this thing. It's really hard to tell what stuff has stuff in it. Like, is it in here? The copper and gold? We just don't know. Oh, thank God I finally got it to work. Oh, I think it's... Oh, I think it's even making it? Or... Oh, I think it's just filling up. I don't think it's made in it yet. Question mark? Oh, uh, it just stamped. How do I get it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I've already made eight Dawnstone. Okay, I gotta say, this mod, Embers, I think the concept is really cool, and I think the aesthetics of the mod are very cool, but it is so incredibly fiddly. You gotta do everything just right, or nothing works. I'm not even sure exactly um, what the issue was. I've also been trying to fix it so long, I don't remember where I was before the cut, so I'm not sure what I changed. I mentioned the thing with the stamper and the stamp base, right? Um, I think one thing I did change is it turns out um, the stamp base is the thing that the liquid attaches to and goes to, but the stamper is the thing that needs the ember receptor. It needs power as well. Also, the mixer centrifuge, it turns out the ember receptor has to go on the top. Cannot go on the bottom. That was my last issue that I was running into for a while. The mixer was just not mixing. And that was why. It wasn't actually properly getting power. So finally got it to work. Christ, I think I've wasted like almost all my embers. I've only got 10 ember shards left. Oh, make that 11. So that was frustrating. But uh, yeah, finally got it. Oh, whoa, 20. Okay. Sweet. Well, that's probably plenty to make the alloy maker, right? Let's uh, toss a bunch of this stuff. I don't need to... I don't think I need to worry about making any ember stuff for a little while. Oh yeah, I broke the cinder plinth because it accidentally ate my engineer's hammer. I just moused over it and just clicked on it and it just turned it into ash. So, had to make another one and I just destroyed it in my frustration because I never want that to happen again. <laughs> Screw that thing, it needs to be in its own protected room so you can't accidentally click on it. 
Okay, so the whole point of making Dawnstone was to make metal alloy. Dawnstone, iron furnace, obsidian pressure plate, and bulls. Got everything ready for it. Furnace. And that goes here to make an iron furnace. Iron furnace goes here along with a couple bowls, some dawnstone, and an obsidian pressure plate to make a metal alloy. So as it says, powered by either energized fuel blend or an induction heating element and RF. So I'm definitely going to want to RF power this thing, which means I'm going to need an induction heating element to get that to work. Let's just plop this thing down and see what it looks like. Um, yeah, seems kind of cramped there, but that's fine. Okay, so I know you put all the things you want to turn, all the things you want to alloy together here. This is where you'd power it, and this is probably where the induction heating element would go, so. Induction heating interface, that's got to be it. Bunch of iron. Hmm. Nichrome. Nichrome dust. Crusher O. So I think. Iron, chromium, and nickel. Chromium. Made in the chemical extractor. What's the chemical extractor? Hmm. I get the feeling I've got to do a bunch of other stuff before I can possibly power it with RF, because it looks like I need to make other rock hounding things, and I'm sure they must be powered. And obviously without making them... without having made them already and gotten the chromium and all that stuff, I can't make the induction heating element, so I think I've got to make the energized fuel blend to power a bunch of things until I can finally make the induction heating element. Energized fuel blend. What's that made from? Ah, it takes an ember shard. Although, you make a whole stack of it with one ember shard. Glowstone, easy, red coal. Which is just coal and redstone. Okay, that's not too bad. As long as I don't have to make too much of this stuff before I can switch over to RF. But yeah, the chemical extractor. Item cabinet, glass, iron. Okay, I mean, that's easy to make. But I imagine it's not just a matter of making just the chemical extractor, probably. You probably gotta make a bunch of things. I don't know. Um, let's try it. I'm gonna make some fuel and I'll make the chemical extractor and just see what I can do with it. Okay, yeah. Um, I was in the process of making this and then I realized it has a description. It. I remember seeing a little bit of this thing being used in a video and it needs a lot of stuff. So it needs the fuel blend just to power it, of course, but it also needs syngas in the left fluid tank, which requires the lab oven. It needs hydrofluoric in the right fluid tank, which is made in another lab oven. It needs test tubes. A shard that's been produced by the mineral analyzer, so I guess I need a mineral analyzer. So it needs a bunch of stuff. I basically just kind of need to make like all the raw counting things. Um, but the chemical extractor itself is quite easy to make, so hopefully the other stuff is just as easy. I'm going to try to make it. I've got everything ready on the crafting tables to make, I think, all the basic machines, the lab ovens and the chemical analyzers and things like that. But I want somewhere to put them. I don't just want to, like, put a mess of machines right here. Even this metal alloy are just all sad in the corner. It doesn't really fit. I don't want to pack it in too tight, so let's expand this area a little bit. I think I'll leave these where they are, but I think I will make a little pathway that kind of goes up here. And then make another, like, level, another layer right about here. So let me clear this out. Let's get a foundation laid out here. There's the rough shape laid out. Let's do some chiseling. Not bad looking. 
Nice little staircase up there, too. Alright, let's go grab all the stuff, plop it down, and see what we can do. So, starting here, we have the chemical extractor. Over here, we've got two lab ovens. Pretty standard stuff except for the chemical flask, but even that is quite easy to make. Uh, just a single glass bottle equals eight chemical flasks. So let's make two of these, because I think I'm going to need two. This stuff to make the mineral analyzer. And then this stuff to make the energized fuel blend. Remember the red coal is just coal and redstone. Ember shards being by far the most expensive part. So we're going to make a couple stacks of that see how far it goes. Um, I've got some things here to make a bunch of fluid transfer nodes. So this is the just like the item transfer node from Extra Utilities. Except, well, fluid. It even uses the same transfer pipes. It's just the end part that actually connects to the transfer thing. That's That has to be different for fluids. You can use the same pipes. Um, I'll just make like, I'll just make them all, whatever. It's fine, I'm sure I'll use them at some point. And then, oh, right, that's just extra crap that I think I might need. I might need these test tubes. I think something said it needed them. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, plop them down. So I think it all starts with the lab ovens. The lab ovens have to produce the syngas and the hydrofluoric acid, I think it was. I'm gonna want a decent amount of space here. I don't want to put it too close to the wall because I'm gonna have a lot of pipes running all over the place, transporting fluids and things. So I guess I'll put it back here. I'll give it two spaces from the wall. Let's give that some room. Okay. How the hell does this work? <laughs> what goes in this thing? Obviously, a lot of things. Obviously, some fuel. Okay. Alright, so you can just fill it up with a bunch of fuel. And it works just like the bloomery, as far as fuel goes. Just fills up the meter, and the meter doesn't go down unless you're actually doing something. Um... Water, sulfuric acid, fluorite bearing. What is this? Mineral sizer. How does any of this stuff work? Hmm, I think I might need a mineral sizer. It looks like you crush something, like in this case granite, and it turns into fluorite bearing compound. But then what do you use fluorite bearing compound for? It turns into hydrofluoric acid and sulfuric acid, right? Or is it turn it into sulfuric acid from hydrofluoric acid? Hmm. What if I just stick an empty test tube in here? No, that doesn't work. Here we go. Got everything together for the mineral sizer. And I think the recipe showed a crushing gear being used. I don't know if that's just part of the GUI or if you actually need a separate crushing gear or something, so I'm just going to make an extra one just in case. Um, oh, right. What am I crushing? What was it diorite? Granite. I don't think I actually have any granite. Um, because I usually just throw it out, because so far it hasn't been used for a single thing, and I just don't care about it. Uh-oh. Okay. Got a bunch of granite. Also made another stack of the energized fuel blend, because every single thing that I'm making uses that as a fuel source, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to need a lot of it. Probably more than I even have right now. Get out of here, andesite. Get out of my sight, andesite. Okay, mineral sizer. So let's move these things over. I guess it's going to start with the mineral sizer. Throws them in there. Yeah, it looks like it does need a crushing gear. Yes, it does. So if we put granite in there, it should crush it. It's going through power pretty fast. Turns it into fluorite bearing compound. I'm not sure what these two sections are for. Anyway. And then, what do I do with that? So that is what I put into the lab oven, right? Yes. All right. 
So let's plop that down. So what if I just put it in? Um, hold on. I think the other lab oven already had a bunch of fuel in it. Yes. It needs something else, doesn't it? It does. What am I missing? Hmm, what it shows for the recipe is a different GUI than what the lab oven actually looks like. It just shows a fluoride bearing compound. And then, like, I don't know, does it turn into hydrofluoric acid and sulfuric acid? Turns into two things? I feel like I remember seeing somebody put something here in a video. Like, sulfur? I almost want to say. Just on a whim, let me just try throwing sulfur in there and see if it does something. Is that sulfur? Yeah. No. Okay, let me look it up. Yeah, so I found an infographic that goes into how everything works, and it looks like I do need the sulfuric acid. In addition to the... Was it the fluoride-bearing compound to make the hydrofluoric acid? So, I thought maybe I would just need two ovens? No, it looks like I need four ovens. Um, I need a separate oven to make hydrochloric acid, another one to make sulfuric acid, another one to make hydrofluoric acid, hydrofluoric as opposed to hydrochloric, and then another one to make syngas. And some of them are interconnected. Like the one that makes uh, sulfuric acid, for example, you need sulfuric acid in the one to make hydrochloric acid, and in the one to make hydrofluoric acid. Yeah, so it's going to take a lot of work. Um, to make the hydrochloric acid, aside from the sulfuric acid, I also need sodium chloride compound, which is made using, I think, like test tubes or chemical flasks. Let's see. Yeah, chemical flask plus salt. So I just got a bunch of salt. It's uh, mechanism salt, which I've seen it a couple times just around the beach. Just kind of find it on the water's edge. Never gathered it, never had a point, but I just went and got some. It seems pretty readily available, so that shouldn't be a problem. The rest of this stuff... Um, well, the most key one is the one that makes sulfuric acid, because that's used in two of the other lab ovens. And for that, I do need sulfur. Does that mean I can just throw sulfur in? Oh, it needs sulfur and water is what it, the infographic says. Does it need to be sulfur dioxide? Because I can't throw the sulfur itself in. Well, anyway, apparently this thing needs sulfur in some form. And also water. So I'm going to have to make a crap ton of things to get all this stuff working. Um, it suggests using an IC2 extractor to turn gunpowder from a mob farm into sulfur. Which would be a very good idea, because gunpowder won't be a problem with my mob farm. So let's look up the extractor. Is it something we can make? Taps, basic machine casing, electronic circuit. Yes, I can absolutely make that. Not that big of a deal. However, I am missing some things. I'm pretty much out of redstone. I think this three redstone is all I've got on me. I mean, I, I think what I have on me is all I have in total. So I think I need to regroup, gather some materials, and, um... I almost want to upgrade my power system, too. The thing is, I don't need power... more power... yet. But as soon as I get this stuff running enough that I can turn it all over into RF power, because I kind of need to get the whole process working using just the, the fuel compound, and then I can turn it over to RF power. As soon as I do that, I'm going to want to run this stuff, like all these different machines, constantly. And I'm going to need way more power. But maybe I'll save that till after I get the whole system working, upgrading the power system. But yeah, um, I think this is an okay place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to get all the stuff together to hopefully get the whole process using all four lab ovens and all the different chemicals and things that I need. Gonna get it all together and hopefully get the process up and going.